EPA and WA meteorologist Bobby Marchant here with your outlook for the weekend, January 7th and 8th, 2023. The weekend video forecast is proudly sponsored by Bozergeist Brewing Company in Easton. They are located at 1250 Salmon Boulevard in Easton, very close to Lafayette College. They are purveyors of fine craft beer in the Lehigh Valley with a vast beer selection from IPAs to ales to stouts and sours, including... A new Imperial Stout release this week, and I'm, uh, from what I understand, it's a uh, concoction of uh, coffee, chocolate, and coconut flavor, which is right up my alley, so I'm going to have to try that out. Uh, they also have a fantastic menu selection, live entertainment, open mic nights, and trivia nights, and are open five days a week between Wednesday and Sunday. They are Bozergeist Brewing Company in Easton, proud sponsors of the weekend video forecast. All right, so yesterday I released a long-range outlook. I've been kind of gearing you towards this and what we're, what's coming this month, which isn't much. Uh, we have a couple thread-the-needle shots uh, this this week, but I think the first one is going to be very, very minor snow, like coating to an inch kind of stuff, and that's going to be coming in on Sunday night, uh, probably after midnight for most areas, into very early Monday morning. Uh, the second threat later in the week is not looking so good for snow now, okay? Uh, so uh, it, after that point, once we get past mid-month, you're not getting snow, most likely, until it, it at a minimum until the very tail end of the month, and that's going to be in question too. So this month does not look very good. It was very warm uh, overall. We're going for plus three to plus five uh, degree temperature departures by the end of the month. So it's pretty warm for the month of January in the coldest climatological uh, period of the year. So this is not going to be a good month for snow, it looks like. Okay, so we will have one shot coming in on Sunday night. We have a partly to mostly cloudy day today, and then uh, we're expecting sunny to partly cloudy skies here on Sunday. So the weekend days are dry. It's just in the overnight, you have the opportunity for, with this weak wave moving off to the south, to have some snow showers overnight. There's still some question exactly where this sets up and who gets the coating to an inch and who doesn't. So that's the only thing really you have to worry worry about is uh, who gets what. Uh, GFS is su suggesting most of the area gets into at least some of the action north of the Mason-Dixon line. This would not include South Jersey and Delaware in this case because it is uh, a marginal temperature situation for you there. Okay, but areas for the north, including some areas that didn't get any snow at all this year so far, will get into... Uh, some snow out of this, we think. So let's go over to the NAM High Res Future Simulator Radar. I'm going to start this off at midnight Sunday night. So this is actually technically uh, uh, Monday morning, but uh, in the wee hours of the morning as I move this forward. This is the three kilometer NAM. So you can see some snow here near the Mason Dixon line. And this is going to follow a path here right in between the I 78 corridor, which runs like this, and these areas right here. This is what the NAM is trying to do. It's trying to extend the snow right in between there and split the split the uprights, so to speak, uh, in between those two uh, lines, and it just takes it right out into early Monday morning off the coast. So this is right generally like an I seventy between I seventy eight and the Mason Dixon line deal. You see further south here, South Jersey, Delaware. These are just showers because it is a marginal temperature situation there, and as a result of this. Uh, it doesn't produce much snow. You see where that swath of snow here is? It's according to an inch for most areas. Not impossible for somebody to go slightly over an inch here, but, I mean, it's generally according to an inch for most areas within that swath area. Uh, NAM has it right here. This is the NAM 3 kilometer. If I go this, take this over to the European model, however, it's further north, and it's across the I-78 corridor for the highest amounts within that according to an inch range. So this is all we're going to have to do. This is not a map-worthy system. So don't expect to go to weather alerts this weekend and check out the weather alerts maps uh, for this and, and uh, expect a snow map. We don't make snow maps for according to an inch. We just don't. Uh, what we're going to do and how we're going to handle this is the My Pocket Meteorologist members that sign up for the text alerts are going to get alerts for their county with timing and exact amounts for their location. We're not going to put it in map form, though, for the public. Just not because we don't do that for... A coding no inch type stuff. Bigger systems, sure. Okay, this is not a bigger system, and it's not going to trend in that direction. GFS this evening uh, has a similar idea with the coding no inch stuff, but it's kind of split here between the southern. Uh, actually, has a has more snow across the areas that nowhere else has it across uh, parts of eastern Maryland, Delaware, and extreme southern New Jersey, and then it has a swath here over the Poconos and higher elevations of Northeast PA. And just like coatings and stuff in the middle, coating to a half inch in the middle of that. So we just have to sort out exactly where this is going to be. That's it. Uh, and that's it for that system. After this, all eyes were on the end of the week, the Friday-Saturday time frame, 
And uh, we are still monitoring this. Uh, that will tell you the trends this evening and this afternoon have not been good for snow. Has not at all been good for snow. Uh, here's the latest GFS. Uh, has a cold front coming through here on Wednesday, reinforcing cold front. This does not have the real cold push ahead of it that it had uh, a couple days ago, or even as of yesterday when I last did the video. So as a result of that, the high pressure that is off to our north that would be the cold air supply. You see this big 1040 high right here? This is not going to be held in by anything, so it's going to very quickly escape out, uh, out of the region. It's going to be up over eastern uh, eastern Canada, not Quebec, but the Quebec province, but even further east than that when you get over to uh, Newfoundland, Newfoundland, Newfoundland and Labrador up in that area. Okay, so that's where the high pressure is going to set up, and uh, that is on every single model showing that. And because of that, see, this it's scooting out already. This area... <laughs> excuse me, the area of low pressure is able to cut to the west of our region and bring rain into the region instead for uh, the Friday night through Saturday time frame, right? And this is uh, this is the GFS, maybe some tail and flakes here, but I mean the, the, the meat and potatoes of the storm is not uh, anything but rain, okay? And this is too warm and it's warm all the way up into New England with this kind of track. It does try to redevelop to a secondary, but there's no cold air source above here to keep the cold air in. This is not that bad of a track, and if we had a cold air source, a big high sitting above here, funneling in cold air into the system, this would be a snowstorm. And so when you're looking at a long-range signal, which this is, it's a winter storm signal that we've had in our long range for a couple weeks now. When we're looking at this very long range, we can see the storm here, and we can even see that it might take an ideal track. The problem is we can't see how much cold air is going to be available at that time and whether or not this high is going to be in the right position when this storm gets here. Uh, we saw the high there. The high was there. It escapes. It leaves. And that leaves the uh, leaves the door open for some warm air to be invited in and you get some rain in this situation. Does this mean this is the way it's going to play out necessarily? No. Uh, it could go back the way it was or bring you, you know, bring a snow component to this shit. So we're not running this off. Uh, today is only, uh, it's actually recording this video just past midnight on Friday night. So, uh, you know, a lot of times for this to change be between uh, now and the next seven days. So we're not giving up on this idea. And I'll have an update for this again in the Weather Weekly's video on Sunday. And then, of course, next week. But I will tell you that everything else is doing that this evening. Here's the Canadian model I ran this evening doing the same exact thing. And invites all those, it's a great track. That's not the issue. The issue here is a lack of cold air source above it to keep the cold air locked. And the Canadian brings uh, rain in the situation. European model was the first one to jump. And this does the same thing. It's rain for the entire system. Again, no cold air source. It's up in eastern, far eastern Canada. So uh, without that cold air source to funnel in the cold air into the system, you're going to get rain in this situation because the temperatures are marginal. And, uh, and there, again, there's, there's time for this to change. The ensembles looked great all week, and they still do. It's just a matter of where's the cold air source. We just don't have it. Okay, so we'll continue to follow this over the next couple of days. Again, this is not necessarily a final solution. A lot of people will say, well, if it's showing rain, it's going to be right. Well, usually that is the case, right? When it's showing the warm air advection, it's easier to, uh, to forecast that than it is to do uh, a, a snow event. But, uh, you know, this can certainly go back. We have time for that to go back. So we'll continue to follow that throughout the week. Uh, weekend and then uh, next week here but uh, right now our focus is going to be on the shorter term which is this system is going to bring these snow showers across at least our southern areas uh, on Sunday night after midnight into early Monday morning but again we're, we're just looking at placement right now does this come a little bit further north does the snow come a little further south those are answers that we will provide over the weekend and if you're a my pocket meteorologist text alert subscriber you'll get that information on Saturday and Sunday. I'm EPA WA Meteorologist Bobby Marchus. That is your outlook for the weekend, January 7th and 8th, 2023. Have a great Saturday and Sunday.